What happens when urban, man-made air pollution mixes with what we think of as pristine forest air? It's an important question because it happens daily as hydrocarbon particles and gases from vehicle exhaust, industrial operations, or agricultural burning flow from the Sacramento, California area to the Sierra Nevada mountains where the trees put out their own hydrocarbon emissions. Atmospheric scientists at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory want to know more about what this interaction means for the climate. The Department of Energy's Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Climate Research Facility provided funding and equipment for the Carbonaceous Aerosol and Radiative Effects Study led by PNNL. The month-long CARES campaign included 22 research flights between Sacramento and the Blodgett Forest, about 50 miles away. PNNL researchers hypothesized that many more secondary organic aerosols, or tiny particles, would form when the urban pollution plume interacted with the forest emissions over the Sierra Nevada mountains. And the data indicates they were right. So we found uh, two things. Uh, one, uh, when urban pollution mixes with forest emissions, we get uh, much more uh, secondary organic aerosols uh, formed uh, than if the urban pollution uh, and the forest emissions act alone. Uh, and the secondary organic aerosols are, are primarily thought to be formed from forest emissions but only when they interact with uh, urban emissions that their levels go up dramatically. Since aerosols that have bright optical qualities reflect sunlight back into space, the climate implications might mean we'll see more cooling over the Central Valley of California. The data themselves are telling us that um, there should be more cooling over Central Valley because of enhanced secondary organic aerosol formation. Um, but what that means for climate change in that area uh, remains to be seen uh, once we develop an improved aerosol model for that region and uh, then we can run uh, longer term climate simulations for that region and see what would happen and what the impact would be on, on climate in that area. The other thing that we found uh, is when um, soot particles from auto exhaust or truck exhaust uh, these are black carbon particles. When they um, age, meaning they evolve in the atmosphere and they get coated by organics and other chemicals, uh, it forms a little shell over these black carbon particles. And that uh, causes the black carbon particles to absorb more sunlight than it would without the coating. Um, but in the CARES experiment, we found that the enhancement in absorption was not as much as we would expect from a model that we currently have. So that was a surprise. Researchers are trying to reproduce in the PNNL laboratory the conditions they observed in the field so they can isolate and study the various interactions in a controlled environment. So we put these in our chamber uh, in different uh, ratios and um, and we have uh, UV lights in the chamber that mimic the solar radiation. So we really try to recreate the, the smog conditions that we saw in CARES in the chamber and then let these different uh, emissions interact with each other and see how that affects uh, secondary organic aerosol formation. And then we can uh, look at its composition, its size, its, its optical properties and other things much more carefully than we could in the field. Laboratory experiments, together with the knowledge gained from detailed analysis of data gathered during the CARES field campaign, will be used to improve existing climate models. That model does not currently represent the effect of urban pollution mixing with forest emissions. Eventually, Improved regional and global aerosol models will be used to better simulate the ways that aerosols affect climate. Through research efforts like CARES, PNNL researchers are transforming the nation's ability to predict climate change and its impacts.